I thought today we would talk a little bit more about all of the topicals and what exactly they do. So most of whatever um, mixture you're using is usually not just going to be one ingredient. It's going to be a mixture of lots of different ingredients. Um, and there's a reason for that because they don't all do the same thing. For example, hydroquinone, mequinol, and arbutin, those all mimic the tyranose enzyme. And so basically it tricks your body into thinking it's making melanin when it's not. Those three are the only three topicals that actually can do that for your body. And I think that's why they're such heavy hitters when it comes to actually getting noticeable results when it's time for you to, um, you know, lighten. Obviously, if you're lightening from the inside out with um, your glutathione and your MSM, this will help speed that up because it'll help your new skin shine through. Um, but the cool thing about all of this is that you don't just have to pick one. Like if you're using niacinamide, retinoids, all of those slow down the production of melanin. So retinoids and niacinamide will slow it down. It won't necessarily stop it completely but it does help a little bit and so this is why they talk about tretinoin and saying that it's not necessarily going to do all of the work but most definitely it can help lighten you over time um, licorice extract for example it works to basically disperse the melon in your skin tone so if you have like patchy lighting right now I highly recommend you add some um, I highly recommend you add some licorice extract to whatever lotion you're using, whether it's a lotion that has arbutin in it or it could be like a lactic acid lotion. Add some of the licorice extract and this is going to help you so much with just making sure that you're lightening even. This is going to help you so much with making sure that you're lightening evenly because we all know looking patchy and crazy like there comes a point where it's like noticeable so at first maybe only you will be able to see but after a while as your lightning speeds up um, you have to stay on top of making sure that everything looks even when we talk about AHAs and retinoids all of those are great for cell turnover um, basically that's what you need to get that newer lighter skin underneath um, Using these and using, if you're on Glyphine or MSM, these are, I would say 100% go for it. If you are not using an internal lightener and you're just using topicals, then um, you're still gonna need something heavier. <laughs> like you can't just use AHAs like uh, glycolic acid and lactic acid. Those are great examples of AHAs. You can't just use those and think that those are gonna lighten your skin because like it's gonna help with showing um, brighter skin underneath, but not necessarily going to help you go down like two or three shades. Um, you would need something that would help to literally block the melanin and so those are helping more cell turnover you know retinoids those slow down melanin but like i said you need to mix that with something else so perhaps an arbutin um a mequinol or a kojic acid something like that those are still great to use but i'm just saying those are going to be um for cell turnover and i think no matter where you are in your skin lightening journey there's always a time and a place for those. So for me, I kind of want a mixture of all of them in my routine and at certain points, um, you'll notice that they'll really help. Like for example, if you're to use like a glycolic acid or something like that, or maybe even a tretinoin, that would be really, really great for helping maintain your color after you've already got to the color that you wanted to reach and so you would use that on a daily as well as you know continuing with like small doses of glutathione or something um earlier on in your skin lightening routine i wouldn't just rely on doing like ahas or retinoids like you would definitely need something to get the show moving and um help your body so when we talk about vitamin C and kojic acid, both of those help prevent the tyranese process from even creating more melanin. So you see how there's others that slow it down, like retinoids slow it down, niacinamide slow it down, licorice extract help to disperse the, um, the melanin. Um, so these help to just prevent the process. We talked about how hydroquinone, mequinol, and arbutin, those all pretend like it's the enzyme, the tyranose enzyme, and basically it tricks your body into thinking you're still making melanin, but you're not. So vitamin C and kojic acid are just going to block it from even creating more melanin um again you see why most of our products like are a blend of all of these um you have to be careful with vitamin c um if you're part of the patreon i did a write-up on vitamin c all the things you cannot mix with vitamin c and that you should not use some of these ingredients like if you use it it'll actually counteract each other meaning you won't get any of the benefits of either ingredient other ones it'll just really um cause your skin to become inflamed or some type of irritation which you know how just upsetting that is when you have that happen because then you have to stop whatever you're using you have to take a break you usually have to stop whatever exfoliation routine you're doing it 
gets really annoying. One of the things I'm testing right now is um, just high levels of vitamin C. And I'm testing it firstly on a scar that I've had for the last two years um, to see if that can help with um, the dark hyperpigmentation that's all around that scar and just helping it lighten into the rest of my skin. But also I wanna see what is it gonna do to the surrounding skin? Is this something that I would want to use as an all over like heavy body lightener? Because now that I know that some of my other lotions that i'm using for lightening i could not use those with vitamin c like before i was like oh i'm gonna put them together but now i know i will have to choose one or the other and so in the future i definitely see myself maybe keeping some of the topicals that i'm already using on one side of my body and using like a very high strength vitamin c on the other just to see if you know who gets ahead more <laughs> or uh, what the difference would be um again you just have to know what ingredients don't mix with the vitamin C to do that. I think for most of us, like if you're using a retinoid, you either got a prescription for it, which now it's pretty cool. They have it to where you can get, um, you can see like an online dermatologist and then they can send it to your house. So kind of like if you've ever done those birth control online, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, yeah, you can just get prescriptions for birth control online and um, you will see an online doctor and whatnot. They're the same thing for some of these acne medications. So tretinoin is on there, spironolactin, and lots of other things that before you'd have to go in person to see a doctor. And so I think if you wanted to add like a tretinoin to your routine and add it to some of the creams that you already have at home, I think now is like a great time to, you know, do that. You could do it without even leaving your house. Um, but just understand that you know if you're using a vitamin c just just stop or just use it on a different area of your body that you're not using that um retinoid so tretinoin is a retinoid um vitamin a is retinoid and then the retinols are like what you can get over the counter and so while they're not as strong as tretinoin they're still pretty strong <laughs> and so it's like for both of those just don't mix with vitamin c just choose one or the other and um the vitamin c that i'm going to be experimenting with right now is 20 percent i scaled myself back because so i was like i'm gonna go 30 percent but honestly that's like a that's a full send <laughs> i don't think i need to send it that hard for me to get results Results from it just because me using the 15% all over my body m months before like that worked just fine so I think 20% will just be a bump up from that I just want to see just if you were to rely just on it what it could really do to your skin so not only any areas of hyperpigmentation or scars that you have but also just the underlying you know skin so don't forget i have a patreon i do daily emails about skin lightening and skincare every single day i post lots of videos there's vlogs um there's diy tutorials of some of these diy projects um the skin lightening ones that i'm doing and so there's a lot of information on there I'm posting daily um, and of course if you have any questions about your routine then we can chat about it send over pictures and we can figure out what maybe would be the best for you your budget and whatnot so go check out that I'll have the link down below and um, yeah I'll see you guys in the next video